who's going to be presenting today. Okay, this is, uh, can the person presenting state their name? And not getting any sound? Oh, I think you're muted there. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Bashevich. I'm a registered professional partner and the development manager at our cloud developments. Uh, joining me this evening are several members of our architectural team. Uh, led by Marshall Burton, our class vice president of architecture and design, as well as Kelly Bongart and Archie as chief architects, Sam Musney, our lead designer, and Laurel and Sizzle, our landscape architect. So this is uh, okay. Should be on slide two now. Same presentation overview. Yeah, you're good. Thank you. Um, so I have a suggestion. I heard a slide presentation to give you an overview of the project. Um, our intent is to go fairly quickly so we can get to panel members' questions and comments, uh, although we also have other supporting documents ready to share on screen if required, including the complete development permit drawing set and all the documents in your agenda package. As a quick introduction to Ironclad, we are an integrated development and construction company focused on multifamily housing. We're based in Winnipeg and Acton across Canada, with several projects completed and under construction on Vancouver Island. This project, which we've dubbed Harbor Hills, will be our first in the island. Uh, this slide shows our development site, which is about 2.3 acres. Shown here. Um, it is to the south of 3rd Street between Hill Crest and Watfield, but it doesn't actually front on 3rd Street. To the north between our site and 3rd Street is a vacant parcel on Violet and Party. To the east is Watfield Avenue, which is our only public street frontage. To the west are recently completed condo projects, and beyond them is Hill Crest Avenue. And to the south are single family homes on Sperling, Sperling Road. Um, what we don't see uh, on this slide is the sloping terrain, which has been a key factor in shaping our design. So to give you a general orientation, the lowest point is at the corner of 3rd and Hillcrest. Uh, moving east along 3rd, the last slopes up towards Watfield. Moving south along Watfield, the slopes up a bit to a crest above here, and then slopes down from there to Sperling Road. Um, moving west along the southern boundary of our properties, land slopes down, oh, pardon me, down towards Hillcrest, um, and moving north along Hillcrest, it slopes down towards Third Street. The next two slides have a couple of photos that show the slopes uh, and the surrounding properties. So this is a view looking at the corner of the third and health rest and showing the recently completed condo projects and the slope of the land uh, up to the east along Third Street um, and to the south along Hillcrest. And then this view is looking at the corner of Third Quad Field, uh, showing the vacant parcel between Third Street and our site, uh, mid-rise multifamily housing under construction across Third Street and the land sloping down 3rd Street and slightly up along Watford to this crest that I mentioned and then down. Let's go turn to the proposal itself. This is an overview of the project, an overhead view, or literally of the project. You can see the boundary of our site is outlined in this red line. It kind of zigzags along there and across the top, down the east side and across the bottom. That's as shown on the previous slides. Uh, to the west are those recently completed condos. To the north is the big parcel uh, between our site and Third Street. So along the northern boundary of our site, there will be a new private road created on the east-west, parallel to Third Street, from Longfield to Hillcrest. Uh, we'll have two vehicular access points to the project, one from the private road here, and one from Longfield Avenue over here. Um, on our site, we're proposing two mid rise apartment buildings. Um, the more westerly, uh, oriented on the 45 degree angle here, is labeled Building 1 in our drawings at APS 
just now for Porto. Um, and the more easterly building, um, the L shaped plan is labeled building two. Give you a quick summary of the key statistics for the project. Uh, we're developing under the existing COR2 zone, so there's no change in zone. Uh, the lot area is, is far in excess of the minimum. Um, the maximum permitted FAR, including the bonus density provisions that are discussed in the staff, the staff report, is 1.70. Uh, the proposed actual FAR is 1.63. The proposed height is 16.9 meters versus 18 meters permitted. The project will have 171 units in total. Uh, predominantly one and two bedroom units with a small number of three bedroom and bachelor units. And as Caleb noted, there are no variances requested in the project. But in terms of parking, uh, the requirement for 171 units is 260 installs, and our project meets that. Uh, surpasses the requirement for accessible stalls. Um, and of note, out of the 100, 260 installs, 172 or 80% are classified as underground. And 108 of them, uh, or 50 percent, are equipped with level two electric vehicle chargers. And the project provides 125 bicycle parking stalls, surpassing the required minimum of 103. Uh, and with that, I'll uh, ask Marshall to then go through the next seven slides in our deck, which will illustrate the evolution of the design. Thanks, uh, Michael. <coughs> uh, <coughs> we'll just return this one. Uh, Overhead sign, excuse me, to represent the two buildings. And I'll quickly talk about some of the orientation that was identified. Uh, building one, which follows along the 45 degree access to property line, um, that was a discussion that we had with staff uh, and came to the agreement that uh, if we followed that line, it would uh, uh, make use of the site quite well and also sort of minimize impacts on the uh, single family homes to the south. Uh, and then we oriented uh, building two to be prominent on the corner of uh, Watfield. Uh, and the new, uh, the new uh, uh, drive off will uh, be uh, developed uh, within the new overall development itself. Uh, and then we turned back into the site a little bit and stepped, uh, stepped away at the south property line at the bottom of the L. And uh, again, we be respectful of the single family homes to the, to the south there as well. And as we've spoken, we have access off of Watfield, uh, which takes us in sort of at grade, uh, but at the same time above our first level parkade, providing sort of service parking uh, for visitors. Uh, the second access is off of Highwood Road, sort of mid-block, uh, and that provides us with access uh, at the parkade level, and also to a lower ramp to, uh, to, a, to, a, to the next level down, sort of a tiered uh, setup for the parkade, which we can probably show in the next slide. So as we see here, we have a couple of building sections we're representing. Uh, a couple of the lines, heavy lines, the dashed red line represents the existing topography of the site, uh, cut those locations. And this is our, uh, our, our way to sort of follow the topography and uh, make use of the, the site as it is, uh, while providing sort of underground parking to meet parking uh, density requirements uh, on the site, uh, but at the same time being able to sort of hide and, and keep it away as, as sort of uh, as one of the targets of the, of the development within the, the guidelines. We can probably move on, uh, Michael. Uh, here's a view of uh, our corner at uh, third and the new private uh, drive up. Uh, this will be our main entrance. Uh, we've uh, tried to represent that with a uh, large two-story glazed atrium uh, at the pedestrian level uh, to to sort of uh, address the street frontage uh, as we have uh, uh, a lot with this particular development. Uh, as you look down down the uh, image a bit, you can sort of see there's a second sort of uh, uh, entrance mid-block on the second building. Um, and there were some, some comments from some staff about trying to maintain sort of a, a visual corridor which is sort of being planned on the next development. Um, so we've done our best to sort of address that at the same time. Probably move on. Uh, this view is still from uh, Watfield. Uh, this represents sort of uh, the uh, proposed pedestrian access thoroughfare on the south edge of the property. Uh, this would be a, a public uh, 
sort of first sidewalk that would go from Third Street down to um, uh, Crestfield. Crestfield. Um, Crestfield. We've sort of pulled it away from the edge of the property, provided a landscape buffer uh, along the south edge, provided a walkway, and then there'll be a, a terraced uh, landscaping uh, all along the building edge, along the parking, as well as the slopes from the high side down to down to the low side. Uh, we included this image here to sort of represent sort of uh, the impacts, perhaps, uh, on the single-family homes. Uh, we feel that uh, we've stepped the buildings back quite a ways to be sort of respectful to those uh, to those properties. Uh, and so this was sort of a, a rendering of image to sort of represent um, what the what the uh, neighbors might might end up seeing. So, and this view is from our sort of mid-block entrance. As you can see, sort of in the foreground there, there's uh, direct access to the parkade level at, at, at grade, uh, and then deeper into the sort of uh, central corner area there as well. And as you've seen, we've sort of uh, represented, uh, tried again to sort of address the pedestrian with again some more uh, glazed glazed areas for some of our many spaces that would be at the ground level uh, closest to the to the streetscape. Uh, one of the big things that we wanted to take advantage of was uh, with the building being stepped back uh, at the fourth floor uh, to again to be respectful of um, uh, the adjacent properties uh, and sort of the overall height. Uh, we took advantage to provide sort of uh, outdoor amenity space uh, for our uh, residents uh, and that would be oriented there on a south, south facing condition, um, which uh, we hope could be a lot of great views. Um, all year round. Uh, thank you, Marshall. And then finally, we'll ask uh, Lauren to go through the last two slides that are going to do with the landscape and design. Hey. Uh, so, I'm going to go through the landscape architect on this project. Um, I think they've touched on a couple um, important things. I think starting with building one, probably the most significant feature um, looking at the building is the tiered retaining walls um, help hide the parkade. Um, they're planted with a mix of native plants and some non-native uh, growth resistant but um, I think we've done a good job in trying to create a, an appropriate landscape with a good mix of both. Um, below the walls is our, is our big drainage area and so primarily it, it's a detention space and it will be cobbled like a cobble rock with some boulders to give it a more natural look. Um, around the outsides we've proposed uh, on the upper slope banks, we've proposed native plant and some small trees. Um, I think there may be opportunity to pull some of those down into the channel more, but um, uh, didn't want to. The idea isn't that this is going to be full of water and create any kind of hazard. It's more of a um, short-term retention area. Um, and so these plants, as they push out, they're native plants, so they're they wouldn't be a manicured weed, weeded garden, uh, more of a natural space and habitat. Um, this building one also has a small children's play area. Um, it's highlighted bright blue via accessible rubber surface. This this whole area here, and that's another small amenity space adjacent to it to the west, um, where you can have a couple of tables and potentially some raised garden beds for gardening. It's all on slabs, so the rubberized surface and hardscape will be seamless. Um, for accessibility. Um, we do have some lawn um, adjacent to that, um, just a little bit further out. It would not be fenced, the lawn, um, and it would help to open up the views between the two buildings from the front entrances um, and maximize that, some, some green out in front of the building. Um, we surround the parking, or the uh, garbage, on the edge of the parking with um, vegetation so it doesn't, it's not visible when you're in the amenity spaces. 
Um, there's tiered planting walls all the way along the south uh, walkway again to, to bring down the height of that arcade so you don't see exposed walls um, as you're walking down this corridor. Um, I think we can move to the next slide. In building two, um, we still are dealing with some of this grade change, and so we have more tiered, fully planted walls. Um, pretty much the entire site and covered by building um, is fully vegetated, or we've got some drain rock um, just to keep things tidy uh, along the north side. Um, the walkways are all 1.5 meters minimum for accessibility. Uh, and everything else is pretty much covered with plants and decorative rock. This building has, uh, on the south side of the building, in the, in the interior part of the L, we've got some seating area and bike racks as a sort of an entry, um, a small entry plaza, and a large feature tree as your entry kind of feature on a, a landscape or a lawn or um, I, think, uh, I think that's pretty much my summary. Um, they summarized some of the other plants, building foundation plants and stuff in total. 60 trees total are being proposed and uh, 1,543 plants over the whole development. So it's significant. That concludes our prepared presentation, Madam Chair. Would be pleased to answer any questions, and I would suggest that panel members please feel free to address uh, questions or comments directly to Marshall or Laurel or myself. That's important. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, great presentation. That's nice and clear and wonderful. So, okay, um, we'll do a little round here and have our panel panel members comment on the on the project. So maybe we'll start with Tony, if you'd like. Uh, maybe take her away. Oh, Kevin. Sorry, I meant to ask. You. Kevin's just in. I just, I just have a question for staff. I mean, Sorry, I meant, I meant to say that and I forgot, but thanks for reminding me. So you can ask a question of staff now or can I? You can ask a question of staff right now. I meant to do that. Okay, first. Nice. thanks, nice. Madam Chair. Um, uh, just a couple of questions regarding the DP 1049 on 3rd Street. Um, is that permit, uh, because I remember that permit and I remember the permit, the DP for this site as well from many years ago. Um, is that permit still active, Caleb? Do you know, or is it still, is it expired? Uh, so yeah, that's a good question to the chair. Um, the development permit 1049 is still active and in good standing because the first phase of that um, DP has been completed. That's the countdown is on Hillcrest. So they are anticipating to complete the two, uh, two or more phases of that. Um, sorry. Um, they are anticipating complete the two two more phases facing Third Street of that development permit. But the um, they, what were previously noted as phases three and phases six of development permit ten forty nine um, are being replaced by this development permit. Okay, and then is the the road access agreement uh, obviously is substantial to this this permit? If it doesn't go through, obviously this permit can't be. Correct. Um, technically, this um, property does have um, the minimum required frontage on Blockfield Avenue, but, I'll, but of course, uh, the city staff are looking to secure access and egress off of um, on, on either side. So we are looking at securing that access through the concurrent subdivision application. But as it stands right now, something would have to be changed if that access agreement was not reached. They would have to find a way to get from from the building in the back through to either Watfield or through to uh, to um, Hillside or whatever to get to work, correct? Yeah, that is correct. The current the, the design the site design in front of us um, is dependent on that um, access agreement. Yes. Okay. Good. Thanks, Caleb. Any other questions for staff before Tony goes ahead? Okay, I don't see any. Go ahead, Tony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Overall, a very strong project, uh, a lot of thoughts went into it. Uh, basic form and character, I think, are, uh, are quite appropriate for this site. It's 
challenging site, just the shape of it alone, never mind the grade. So I said, that's generally a job well done. Um, I was pleased to see how you dealt with the neighbors to the south uh, by stepping back the, uh, the height of those, uh, those portions of the building adjacent. Um, and uh, I think uh, that brings it down to, I think, three, three stories at the closest point, something like that. So I think that's really a very, very positive thing. Um, uh, I, wasn't sure, I wasn't clear from your uh, renderings, uh, but the main entrance that you showed that first slide into building two, I guess it is, from the street, your main entrance, um, very, very strong looking form. I commend you for the two story lobby and that kind of thing. Very, very appropriate for a building of this, this magnitude. Um, I, I was puzzled that I, I, I didn't see any kind of horizontal canopy or weather protection or anything, and I just wondered if, if I missed it or whether there's something there for you know, to serve that kind of a purpose and also possibly to strengthen the, you know, the, the, the entrance form itself and kind of scale it down just a little bit. Could you respond to that comment? I guess it applied to the other building as well, but that was the one that sort of hit me first. Uh, thanks for that, Tony. Uh, you, you did not miss it. There, there is no sort of formal canopy uh, that, that you would sort of see. That is something we can definitely take away uh, as a consideration. Um, we've definitely done, done that in other projects in the past. I think uh, in the thinking of today, it was more about sort of a uh, strong sort of geometric shape as the, as the anchor in the corner, uh, about sort of uh, um, interrupting that form. But um, it's, uh, it's a valid point and something we can definitely uh, uh, consider and take away. Yeah, no, I, I, wasn't, I, I, I quite like the two-story uh, glazed uh, uh, element that you have there. I just thought something sort of floating at the midpoint level, uh, you know, not overpowering, but just to, to provide a basic non-muscle entrance protection, but uh, that's fine. Um, the only thing that bothers me a little bit is really how tight the site is. <laughs> uh, that's undeniable. Uh, it's especially um, uh, apparent to me on the building site um, where there's you know, hardly any room for um, outdoor amenity space of any kind. It's all parking and sort of just thin edge uh, uh, you know, the planting because really that's the only space you've got. So the only thing to me it seems is, is there any opportunity to either reduce the amount of that parking on, on that grade uh, on, on the interior of that uh, building, the south side, uh, and or put more of it underground. Well, we, we, we did look at that. Uh, obviously, uh, the jurisdiction provides uh, some bonusing. You know, the more parking we can uh, provide, the low grade. Uh, I believe we've met that uh, threshold uh, currently. Um, the parkade is building out to almost the edges of the, the property. Um, we, we, we could look at it, but it, uh, the, the size and scale of the parking becomes a little bit cost prohibitive the, the deeper we go, particularly. Um, so there's a, there's a limiting factor that we're able to sort of uh, accommodate that. Um, in, in contrast to that, we've also provided sort of this pedestrian thoroughfare running the entire length of the south side of the property um, that is probably taking up some of that, maybe that, that edging or that spacing that maybe be able to sort of make use of if we could have moved it farther to the to the north side. Um, but it was uh, for, you know a, a request of the jurisdiction and we wanted to make sure to, to address those sort of comments. Um, so I think that uh, that uh, is also sort of uh, working against us when it comes to being able to sort of provide some more open space um, as you as you pointed out. Okay, thank you for that response. Uh, that's all I have um, thanks. Great, thanks, from uh, Tony. Um, Jason, would you like to comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have many of the same comments as Tony, so I'll repeat myself. I do like uh, the the form and character of the development. I think you've done a nice job with the rhythm of the kind of frames and reveals and how they interplay with one another. Uh, I also really like the that corner double feature, double, double height space. Uh, I think that's a really strong entryway. Um, I don't have the, the same concerns as the city staff comments about um, 
introducing additional materials. It's a lot of hardy panel, but I think you've done a nice job of applying the color to the horizontal striations to help break up the massing enough that it doesn't feel like one material. So I applaud you for that. Um, one of my comments, um, you actually addressed in your presentation, that it, it, looking at the site plan, it felt almost like your main entrance was coming off of the, the, the back lane. But understanding that is, is viewed as the, the front of the project um, helps clarify that because otherwise it felt a little bit to me like that, that uh, parking area that Tony was just referencing felt, if that was the main entrance, it, it felt like the back to me. So having your clarification on that actually um, helps with that point. Uh, the only thing I would say is I, I do agree uh, with the city that I think it would be nice if you could uh, just like you did in building two, where you adjusted the height uh, of the building as it approaches the single family neighborhood. If you could do the same on building one in that southwest corner, just in that wing where the C1 and D1 units are, looking at the, the sections and the elevations, um, it's six stories, but you effectively start almost a, uh, a level out of grade, it looked like. So the height of the building is essentially seven stories over that single family neighborhood. And while there's not currently a house there, um, if, if there was a similar adjustment to scale as you approach the property line, I think that would be um, a very um, neighborly thing to do and a, and a good design move. Otherwise, I think a very successful project you've been able to uh, really cram a lot into a complicated site with some uh, unconventional geometry. And, um, nice project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jason. Um, Kate, would like to add your comments? Yes. yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I, I'm not going to say too much about the architecture. I agree with what has mostly been said. said. Um, but I would like to speak to the site plan and the last plan. Um, my number one main problem with this project is I see a lot of hard hot surfaces, and and especially well, we are experiencing heat wave and we experienced a heat dome last year, and we now know what the number one things are we can be doing in municipalities to mitigate that is canopy cover from trees. I, I really would like to see you optimize that on this project and even in your tree selection. So, for example, along that public walk, you have nice big columnar trees. Um, maybe you could add in also larger branch trees so we can start to shade some of that hard surfacing we're seeing there. And even I would love to see your trees be a little more dense where you can put them in. I know you're limited because you're on podium or on structure, but there's still a lot of space. I can see a lot more trees coming into play here, and I think your project and the people in the park who will end up living here will greatly benefit from that addition. Um, I would love to know too, um, Laura Lynn, about the, um, the, the drainage um, that the civil engineer has proposed. Do you need to leave it as cobble? Uh, I would prefer to see that completely planted. And so then that's one way you're reducing that hot surfacing and getting more soft surfacing, more plants, more biodiversity. And since you have such limited space, you might as well utilize what you have. So if that's a possibility, I would I would like to see that cobble gone and just full of plants. And I, I know, but I, I'm not sure what the proposal is from the engineer there. But based on work I've done, we need, that should be doable. And especially because that's where you can put in a lot of plants. Um, and I would strongly encourage you to um, reconsider that rubberized surfacing. I'm assuming you're going to be putting in some structures that require a full surface. Um, but it is hot. Um, it does, do, it basically starts to degrade instantly. It's expensive. So now you have a, un, a, a rubber uh, petroleum-based material disintegrating and dispersing itself into the environment and maybe it's not completely necessary, maybe there's something else you can do there for the kids that's a little, has less impact overall. Um, so I think a little, I just generally I would like to see you soften up your space since you have so much hard surfacing. And I agree with the city staff, like that area dedicated to garbage is quite large. And I don't know 
what can be done to mitigate that or if in fact you, it could be moved to the underground parking i'm not sure and i know there's lots of things that lots of variables at play as there always is but i think looking at ways yeah just my number one recommendation is get more tree canopy coverage and softer material on your site or wherever possible and that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to seeing this. I think the building's really interesting, and and, and it's lovely that you have that pedestrian connection. And I just just want you to work harder at mitigating all the hard surfaces. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Kate. Um, Kevin. Thanks, Madam Chair, and thank you, Michael Marshall and Norland, for your presentation. Um, uh, I'm not sure who else was on this panel when we saw the first uh, proposal. And uh, uh, from what I remember, you know, what was proposed along uh, 3rd Street was, was going to be mixed use and it was going to have commercial office on the main floor and some residential up above. And I think the way you've, um, you've taken this project, because before it was going to be uh, there's going to be some student housing and stuff like that, which obviously we need, but I really feel we need this more and to have 171 and, uh, units and, um, and, and we balance though, the units uh, between bachelor, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. I think that's a really good balance because I'm not sure how this is going to be managed, whether or not uh, there, there will be units that will be sold, that will be rented out to students. I'm not sure how that's going to work, uh, but all I can say is we cannot build rental housing and condominiums enough. Every time one goes up, well, that's going to be it. And our vacancy rates are just terrible. So um, I really appreciate, uh, Michael, how you, you, you worked uh, to, to work to meeting tier one requirements, underground parking, uh, working so close to the maximum floor area ratio while keeping the floor or, or the lot coverage down. I think you did a, a really, really good job with that. Um, I won't add anything more about the farming character than has, has already been said. Uh, basically, uh, most of my questions are really around the landscape concept, which I never thought I'd really talk about much, but uh, dealing with landscape architects in the past, I, I, I've come to really appreciate it more. I agree with, with almost all of Kate's comments. Um, I'm worried about um, the this, this southern part of the, the, the site uh, with the, the, the garbage uh, bins there, and you're abutting right up to single family dwellings. And um, I would ask uh, Laura Lynn, um, what is the need to have the the saw or the grass area, and not just have a, an expanded uh, landscape buffer where you might be able to put some larger trees instead of the, the, the purple beech, which is a very columnar tree, and something there that can just give a little bit more of a buffer there using using uh, ground covers and shrubs and stuff instead of having a lawn there uh, between the uh, along the. Uh, the sidewalk there because I, I totally agree with Kate's comment uh, about trying to keep those a little bit more shielded, having more robust trees. So, uh, uh, Laura, then if you can comment on that, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, um, so I think the main reason so the lawn could definitely be changed into a ground cover because um, it's such a tight space between fence and, and then you're coming up into the, uh, like up the tiered walls that are going to be planted. Um, if I did switch the lawn out, I'd want to switch it out for just a, a native ground cover or something very low so it doesn't feel quite so congested. Um, my main reason for choosing the narrower trees was because there are private lots right behind and we've had comments before about leaf litter and people concerned about leaf litter and hanging big wide canopy trees over top of somebody else's yard. Um, I mean, I personally have a tree in my neighbor's yard that shades out almost my whole backyard, um, which is it's not always um, something that you want to push onto your neighbors. The columnar ones were a way to just have a nice vertical green, um, but if, if it doesn't seem like that's a concern for the neighbors, then yes, there's lots of great 
wider canopies that I, I can look yeah. at there. And, and even, like, obviously, if you, if you do decide, uh, like, like, I would like to recommend that like, you decide to eliminate the lawn area, that that yeah. landscape buffer does become wider, that um, you have the opportunity to, to shift the trees more towards the north, and you can even consider columnar uh, serving spruce and stuff like that, because it, you're going to have so much transparency there between the, the residential area to the south that they're, they're, I think, the, and the density of it too, I think that, uh, I think there's ways that you may be able to, to shield it, especially if you decide to to keep the, the garbage enclosures uh, in, in that area and not move them down. Um, you have a lot of parking stalls and you've met the requirement. Uh, whether you need that many, I'm sure it is, it, I'm not sure if Tyler's here, but Tyler, let's say, you move 10 of them and, and 20 of them and, and put, the park, put the garbage on the ground. And uh, a lot of us are starting to feel that way because of the proximity to the downtown area. But um, aside from that, I really like what you did on the the northwest corner. And I agree with Kate. Um, maybe there's ways that you can reduce some of the hard uh, materials and, and look at ways maybe to have uh, materials, uh, soft skate materials there instead of hard skate materials uh, to make that area even better. And I, I agree as well with Kate. Um, the more trees you can put in, um, you, know, you know, you can keep the deciduous trees on the north side, I guess, a little bit more. But uh, I think if you provide a little more evergreen trees to the south side for that screening, um, I think that would be uh, that would help. At least in my opinion. If anybody disagrees with me, they can jump in. But um, I think the outdoor amenity spaces uh, that you provided, uh, the kids area, and then there's the other side. It. I would, I would really like to for you to give some thought a little bit more on how that will be defined um, and how it will be used. Uh, I think Kate jumped on that a little bit, and the materials used and how it's going to be used because you have 171 units. Uh, I think. Um, not only a many space for the children, but also for the adults. Uh, there's really not much around the street. You can walk a few blocks away and go up to the to the, uh, the high school and stuff like that. But there's really not much around for a many space. So I, I would really like you to focus a little bit on uh, how you're going to deal with that part of uh, the site, the outdoor many space. And the only other thing is, uh, whether or not you thought anything about uh, public art. Um, I know it was put into the existing building on the corner of uh, 3rd and, uh, is it Hillside? Yeah, there's the, on that existing building, Hillcrest. There's some public art there. Uh, I'm not sure if you thought about it, uh, whether or not you might be able to consider public art there, uh, uh, and whether or not that does anything to uh, uh, increase your, whether or not you don't need it, you know, increase your, uh, to your value. But uh, aside from that, I, I I think you did a, a good job, uh, Merlin, and um, I just think we're always wanting a little bit more density, especially with trees, and um, I, I was going to make reference to um, the shrubs and stuff, but they're not the or native stuff, but uh, if there was any problems, Kate probably would have jumped in on that, so, <laughs> but uh, aside from those things, uh, I think uh, this is a great project, and I really hope it goes so thank you very much. Okay, did you want to make a quick oh, comment on the shrubbery? Well, sure. It reminded me of something, but it's minor. <laughs> Just that some, some some species you specified, you could pick a native alternative that would, like for example, the ribes alpinium. You could pick our native ribes, and it is super drought tolerant, and it's a happy early spring flowering plant. So there are a few things, but I, I see you have you have a balance. A good balance mix, um, but maybe where there is opportunity to find um, one a native plant instead of another, take it. Yeah. Thank you, Manager. Great. Okay, uh, Tyler. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks so much for the presentation. Um, overall, really exciting project. So happy to see it here. Um, and uh, really, you know, for the most part. Uh, Comments there, I was reflecting on me, but really attractive architecture. Um, I don't have any specific comments 
to the landscape like some of the other made, others made, other than that I would just say if there is an opportunity to uh, provide Laurel then with some, some more opportunities to explore additional landscaping, especially with respect to sort of softening, softening the site, I think that would go a long way. Um, hesitant to provide any of my specific thoughts because I think there may be some shifting there if there was a, another uh, pass at uh, you know, how some areas can be unlocked and how that might come together. But I would just echo that sentiment around. Um, I think additional landscaping would go a, a long way to um, just make the site overall more attractive um, and feel less, um, less hard with the, with the building materials, but also the actual. Thank you. Great, thanks Tyler. Um, well, I've, everybody's made some very good comments. I don't know that I can add too much to that. Um, I did have one question about the balconies on the top floor. They seem to be have no shelter cover. Is there any way to do that? Uh, it seems sort of unusual. They're on the sixth floor of the building, the top floor. Uh, we've, we've done both. Um, it's something you can definitely look at. <clears throat> Um, I think in, in this instance, uh, we were trying to uh, allow the, the, I would say, the bump up the, the breakup of the masses to sort of uh, really, really stand proud and sometimes when we include that eyebrow canopy or trellis, uh, that sort of gets lost a little bit. And I think that was maybe uh, one of the reasons why in this particular instance we wanted to be able to break that mass up a little bit. Um, can we find something that might be fairly minimal and provide that? I think that's something we can take away and, and consider for sure. So. Yeah, no, I thought, I could see that that's, you're trying to work it into the design and it looks good, but I thought, well, for those the users, and some of those balconies look like they're corner balconies. Um, that's a lot of space that's not covered, and, and with our rain and sun, <laughs> a little shelter might, might be really appreciated by the users. So um, that would probably be a, compared to, well, uh, pretty well, everything's been covered. I, I think I, I agree with everybody else on the on the issue of um, yeah. I'll get to you, Kevin. <laughs> Got my thought out here first um, on the issue of uh, more trees and amenity space and space to use there because this, this is becoming a very high density neighborhood. If we count the uh, big buildings across the street that are going in, and I didn't really realize um, when I was looking at the plans, I didn't realize what was going in and in that property just in, just beside your project between you and Third Street. So your your presentation really helped to explain that and clarify it. But you know, I was looking at that and I think, what a wonderful spot for a park. Um, just a strip of green with some trees, a place for uh, even a playground at one end, and a place for people to walk their dogs. Um, because I know that neighborhood well, and there's not, I don't know of any green space around there and we're adding a whole lot of uh, population in here with these with these uh, projects in here and i really think some green space would be welcome and it would just be a lovely touch on that hill to drive up that hill and see a kind of long park with uh, with trees so i'm just going to put that out there hopefully the city ears will be listening i know it's not really our place and it's not the developer's problem but um rather than rather than um public art if they were going to going to um, do something maybe that you know something towards uh, helping to develop something like a park like that and that may also resolve the problem of the uh, co-shared uh, road between the properties so anyway i'm just going to put that idea out there hopefully maybe somebody will pick it up <laughs> so, thanks for your presentation so anyway uh, kevin as yes, you have a comment sorry i forgot one last question for laura lynn mm -hmm. uh, you have the landscape island in the middle of the parking lot between two buildings. And um, I was trying to figure out, I, because unfortunately I could, my eyesight is really poor, um, I couldn't figure out uh, what your program was for that. It looks like you had one tree and you looked like you had a, a program of, of, of shrubs and stuff around there. Can you describe that part? Yeah, so there's, there's parking kind of all the way around it. There's garbage trucks that are backing up and um, so people parking and wanting to just cross um, because it's such a wide space between the, the crosswalks it's sort of a, a area of refuse in the parking lot so we do have some paving so that you can step up onto that and get out of the way of traffic and then 
it's all on the slab there. Um, so we don't have a lot of depth, which is part of the reason I used a rubberized surface in the playground. And so we've got some grace planters, and quite a big one actually, a large grace planter, and uh, with a kind of a more decorative tree. Um, and then a smaller raised planter that kind of steps down with some more ornamental grasses, uh, native ornamental grasses, and uh, just to kind of give a tiered effect to the middle there. But yes, so you mind. Yes, so due to the parking underneath, you know that you have a raised planter, you couldn't put any sort of majestic tree there. Well, we, I chose a duck tree, which isn't maybe the it's not a huge tree or anything, but it is kind of a, a unique, um, very beautiful tree that um, sort of would be a bit of a centerpiece. And then it is going to yeah. be raised up a little bit, so it, it's kind of a little bit quite big. Yeah, and it's a deciduous tree, right? It is. Yeah, and so that would be good. That's perfect for that spot. Because um, obviously, maybe in the winter, it would bring it up there a lot more, too. Um, yeah, so anything you do to, I guess, I'm not going to make a recommendation, I just want to make sure that you thought about that. I, I understand the park underneath, you know, you can raise it, have a raised planter, like three feet or whatever, but obviously yeah, like you're not going to get any huge tree growing there because of that. So, but uh, anything you do to do make that a focal point, I'm just, I'm just not putting in as a recommendation, but I just thought that, that anything you do to make that kind of a focal point so people drive in there onto the drive aisle would be really good. So, uh, yeah, so thanks. Okay, okay, thanks, Kevin. So, um, just to summarize, um, I'm seeing a number of different uh, recommendations here from the group. Um, and first of all, we also don't have any variances, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, I'm just going to read these off. I might get some, some of you to help me phrasing here, but uh, first of all, consider adding a canopy over the main entrances of both buildings. Consider ways to cover all of the upper floor balconies. Consider ways to add increase, to increase uh, uh, outdoor amenity, increase outdoor amenity space. Consider stepping back the height of the build, building one on the southwest corner in keeping with the neighborhood plan. Consider opportunities to add more trees to shade hard surface areas. And Kate, I might need your help with that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just finish reading these and then you can tell me if there's a better way of, of putting that. Uh, consider, consider a different surface for the playground area. Um, and consider moving the garbage into the garage. And consider um, the opportunities to um, put up some public art. So those are some of the recommendations I was hearing. So um, anybody want to comment on that or make some changes or give me some improvements? Yes, Kevin. I, I just wanted to get uh, Kate's uh, opinion on the lawn area, whether or not that should be eliminated and expanded on with shrubs and ground cover and, and looking at ways to increase the, the, the tree density for really more important on the south property line. Um, and even though I think the north property line too, and, and Kate's comments about the, um, the use of, of less hard materials and less subland uh, or soft materials along the north and west corner, where the, those were kind of our concerns, but Kate can jump in and see. And I'll, I'll defer to her. Okay. Yes, I, I think um, so. Comment about trees would be to increase the tree canopy to mitigate the hard surfaces anywhere possible. So, uh, yeah, like even on the north side, you have some um, planted islands um, in between the that's not over podium. You could be having dead trees in there. Um, and just anywhere you can put a tree that's going to help, um, you know, shade a hard surface. Or uh, I still think. There's tons of room for trees along that um, pedestrian walkway. Um, and um, even because it's south, you don't have, but because that's the south, you're, you're not likely to shade the adjacent properties. So you, have, you don't have to worry too much about shading. But I understand your thoughts are around the litter, but even on the other side of the walkway or the walkway, because I think you have a strip of grass there. There is some little 
Perhaps you could perhaps you could suggest a uh, the recommendation for me. That yes. So the tree recommendation, I think how you said it is pretty close to what I said, and then I would like to see them to find ways to reduce the amount of hard surfacing in the landscape. So and by adding more plant material, um, so whether it's the cobble or um, maybe in when. Uh, Lorelin looks at that amenity area, um, you might want to think about having it raised up so you get some soil depth and you can have more plants in there, not just grass. So maybe that might be more playful too if you think about it as a big plant that you step into. Um, but that's not how we agree, sorry. <laughs> well, consider, consider ways to reduce hard surfaces by adding more plant material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any opportunities, just because you're so limited, you have to take advantage of every spot you've got. That's what I think. Okay, so I've been consider increasing the density of trees to mitigate the hard surfaces and add more trees along the pedestrian walkway. Consider ways to reduce hard surfaces by adding more plant materials. And then there was the play area, if you could help me phrase that. Uh, we were talking about the surface. Yes. To consider um, what the type of materials they're going to use there, so it's not another hard, hot surface that rubber matting is. So I just, I guess, just to consider, I think that maybe my comment about the soft, hard surfacing to soft surfacing kind of applies across the board. Okay, so consider an alternate material uh, for the might, yeah, play like area. Just, it just strikes me as that that's another hard surface that gets hot. Okay. Yeah. But so I think the one comment, the earlier comment that says to reduce hard surface with more plant material may apply. Just as possible. Leave it, leave it under there. Uh, Tony? Yeah. Um, the length of the plant was spent about an hour on just on landscaping. And, uh, uh, we're getting extremely detailed and specific, and I think part of the reason for that is. There's so little of it in proportion to the size of the site. It seems to me that we're, we're kind of fiddling around the edges, literally, um, as, as you know, the, the, the applicant has been struggling with doing exactly that. If there's any appetite in the city, and I don't know, it's a question for Caleb or, or Tyler, I don't know, for some parking variance to relax and get more surface parking out of this site, out of this building to site. To me, that would be more meaningful than you know, adding up to trees or changing this to that. They're all nominal, and I think uh, you know if you really want to do a service uh, to this project and to the residents of the project, uh, it's got to be done on a little bigger scale. Than just you know, adding a few trees here and further tinkering around the edges because that's what it is. So anyway, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Well, we have one of the recommendations I've read out was consider ways to increase outdoor amenity space, and I would see that as one of the ways might be to get rid of some parking, <laughs> so, unless we want to be specific, and I don't think we are supposed to be. So. No, I mean I think that's the only way to, to improve the landscape yeah. and that outdoor amenity space is to get rid of some of that parking on the building too. Right. It's a bigger subject. <laughs> okay. So, um, play area surface. Okay. All right. And Kevin, did you want to include the consider public art as a recommendation? Uh, the, for the size of this project, I don't like to see it and, uh, unless somebody has some disagreement to it. I think there's something they can do about along the wide field. They're right at that entrance for way, which because of that glass facade, which I, I like the, the, the facade because it kind of hopefully is going to blend its way around on the third street because that's going to be mixed use. And if there's any way that they can have something or in that kind of area that, that can be public art, I would be definitely in favor of that with some of these objections to it. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little adverse to making it a recommendation. I think it's, it's something we can the applicant can think of, but personally, I don't know that it's, a, it's the spot for public art. <laughs> if they want to fit it into the building, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if somebody wants to put forth a motion that doesn't include the public art, we vote on that. Uh, we that or the motion for it that includes public art, so whichever way people want. Yeah. Is, does everybody want to include a motion, uh, a recommendation for public art? No. I'm seeing Tony. No. Jason. No. Tyler. <laughs> Kate. Because there is public art on some of the adjacent properties, is it that right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm less concerned with this property. Yeah. I don't think it has as public a profile either from Watfield. It's a small I think the architecture does a good job at being sort of outstanding. They could spend the money on more trees. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather see it go into, into working on the amenity space. <laughs> and they have got the walkway, which I think is a good contribution to the community. And again, if uh, the city uh, made, some, made some move to make a park across the way, maybe they would add something to that. And it's just, that, would, that would solve the problem for amenity space, too. But anyway. So, Madam Chair, <laughs> please remove that consideration from the uh, <laughs> OK, I will. OK, so I'll read through these again just to make sure everybody is um, okay with them, so we can vote them en masse. Uh, so the first one, consider adding a canopy over the main entrances of both buildings. Yes, uh, Tony. I, I don't think that should be a recommendation. I mean, as somebody else is strong, I, I just mentioned mm -hmm. it as a okay. thought. It's, 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 a, it's a consideration, but oh, I, would, okay. I wouldn't include it in the motion. Okay, anybody else want to? Uh, well, I, I, you can either have it as a recommendation or a consideration, Tony. So you can still, you can still have this consideration when we have new minutes and everything. So Consider it's up to you. It was your, was your thing. So uh, and, well, and I, I agree with it. So uh, I, I, I don't have any problem with having it as a consideration. <laughs> consideration, fine. I, yeah, I, I thought I, I had already made that <laughs> a consideration for the applicant, but uh, we want to formalize it. I think, it's, I think it's good to think about it. I, I think there's some. It's like it's like the cover with the balcony. I think part of these things sort of got lost in the design. I mean, the design's great, but then we also have the practical aspects of the building and how it's going to be used, as well as how it looks. So, um, anyway, that, that would be my my in favor of it. Um, number two, consider ways to cover all of the upper floor balconies. Same thing. Um, number three, consider ways to increase outdoor amenity space, which could be all sorts of different ways. And consider stepping back the height of building one south, on the southwest corner in keeping with the neighborhood plan. And consider increasing the density of trees to mitigate the hard surfaces and add more trees along the pedestrian walkway. Number six, consider ways to reduce hard surfaces by adding more plant materials. Number seven, consider an alternate material for the play area surface. And number eight, consider moving the garbage into the garage. And that's any, any I missed. Okay. So if everybody's happy with that, let's have a motion that we accept the development project as presented with those recommendations or considerations. Kevin will make the motion. Well, I, would, I would make a motion to accept the application as presented with those recommendations. Okay. And a seconder? Uh, Jason, all in favor? Okay. Jason, are you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks very much uh, to uh, uh, Marshall and Mike and Laurel Lynn and uh, appreciate your presentation today. So good luck with it. Very thanks. nice project, you guys. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say thank you for the comments on your uh, thoughtful and you know, my events and trying to serve the projects. So we appreciate the effort and time to review and Thank you. Okay, so our second project tonight um, is on uh, 140th Street and it will be introduced by Christine Mays. Go ahead, Christine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, the development permit application is DT 1276 is for two multi tenant industrial buildings, and those are comprising of a total of 6,867 square meters of uh, gross floor area. So the subject property is located in an industrial area of the Chase River neighborhood, um, and that's in the south of the Nanao area. It 
is zoned uh, I2, and that's light industrial, um, and it's for you shaped uh, hook lot, and that's located on the either side of 10th Street, bordered by the uh, e and Railway Corridor. Um, it is zoned, uh, again, light industrial, and then also designated light industrial in the city plan. Um, the subject property falls within development permit area 8 in the new city plan, and that is for farming character. Uh, and the general design is for development permit area design guidelines are the ones that are applied to the proposed development and were considered uh, on that report in front of you. There are no proposed variances. Um, there was a note at the end of the staff report um, regarding potential for there to be uh, an encouragement on the 1.8 meter landscape buffer, but I will turn that over to the applicant as they said that they have um, addressed that concern. And uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Um, any questions for? Well, we'll wait for the presentation here. Sorry. I'm sorry, you're muted. Oh, sure. Yes, turn my mute. <laughs> okay. So the applicant can go ahead, and then we'll have questions for staff after, if uh, need be. So go ahead. Um, and whoever, who's presenting today? Uh, I'll be presenting. Uh, I'm Glenn Hill from DHK Architects. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Go ahead. Uh, so I'll be uh, presenting. I have. Uh, I'm Carl McDonald, who is our landscape architect, and uh, Drew B. Duane, who is our civil consultant working on this project. Um, I will just uh, share my screen here, and uh, I'll keep it uh, as short as speed as possible. Everybody can see the screen, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. So, um, uh, yeah, what you see on the screen here is the, uh, the industrial zone. The identified lot, as, uh, as Christian said, is a book lot. This, um, there is a uh, development permit in for this parcel, and uh, I believe there will be a development permit coming uh, pretty quickly on this one. So the, the parcel that we are looking at is, uh, is this large um, piece on the, uh, the east side of the tent. And um, as you can see, sort of again, in context, it's one of the uh, several industrial zones. Um, areas, like Christy said, the real car work on flanks in, in uh, a bunch of different sides, and then is surrounded in, by the greater sort of uh, uh, residential neighborhood. Um, next slide here. Um, this is a sort of an aerial food route, just to give you a little bit more context. Uh, you'll notice on the north end there is a pre existing industrial. Um, Building that is uh, tenanted and in use, so uh, this this piece of parcel is is already in use, and uh, so we are concentrating on the area to the north of what you see here as the the uh, right way for the hydro power lines that run across the property, and then uh, we're looking at the side of this parcel on the uh, on the side side of the uh, the power lines. Um, and, uh, and yes, this is the other piece of that parcel that has been um, developed through another permit. So uh, just to illustrate that, this is uh, this is the area that we are working with uh, in between the, uh, the grassy knoll or the uh, the build-up area for the uh, power lines. And we have building one uh, located in a uh, in an east-west direction with an entry at the uh, south end of the property and building two. Is that uh, in the north side of the location with a orderly entry uh, to the uh, to the property? So that's that's the scope of our uh, our work here uh, for this industrial parcel park. Uh, just zooming in a little bit, uh, we have we located so the buildings are kind of uh, built uh, built up as a as a uh, pre manufactured kind of building structure. There are uh, um, equal sized bays, with, uh, with the exception of one little notch here and there to, uh, to articulate the building a little bit. Um, the ambition for this development, like most industrial uh, buildings, is to provide as much flexibility in the tenanting space as possible, where uh, it can be a range of some uh, business requiring just one single bay uh, or a smaller uh, operation. Or uh, several days being picked up by a potential uh, tenant for, for uh, a larger uh, distribution or other uh, light industrial uh, use. So 
the, uh, the ambition from the get-go was to create as much flexibility for a variety of industrial, much needed industrial uses, and, um, and uh, that sort of uh, that sort of regular rhythm of uh, structure lends itself to, uh, to providing that, that sense of flexibility um, and uh, uh, opportunities for multiple tenants. Um, the uh, there is parking, so with most of these industrial um, uh, uses, there is the, 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 the kind of the flow of uh, of the uses, uh, larger trucks delivery. Uh, importing, exporting of goods or storage of goods at the rear of the building, and sometimes the potential for a, a customer reception or a, uh, a smaller distribution office or something like that. So, in saying that, we kind of uh, uh, we created a fourth entry point that is would, would largely be the most significant uh, entry point for the larger. Uh, industrial trucks, uh, yard space, and movement. So we've tried to create as much space for these larger vehicles to uh, navigate around the uh, the central uh, uh, right of way area within the car lines, and then create a large staging area um, in front of the loading docks. The same here, where there would be a large uh, backing up and maneuver, the maneuvering uh, area for larger vehicles. On the other side, we've got a, uh, a more of a kind of a commercial or less commercial, but more of a, um, a customer style parking area, which is has been separated from uh, from the, the movement of the larger vehicles. The same on building two, we have uh, an area here where it's a little bit more convenient for uh, cars, visitors, staff to park and enter into a, a sort of a, a front page of buildings where. Uh, leaving the rear of the buildings free for all of the, uh, the sort of uh, warehousing and, uh, and other industrial uses. Uh, we don't have, we're, we're below on our height. Uh, we have uh, gone back and revised our setback. It was a, uh, we had to, uh, we had to readjust one little uh, uh, canopy on our building one, which was approaching to uh, 7.5 meter setback. So we address that in this drawing and uh, just in case this is, has been updated in your package but that, uh, that 17 or 7.5 year setback has been addressed and been unaccommodated. Um, just to give you a quick uh, snapshot, so these are a few uh, a few views. This is the building one the corner. So what we've done is on the frontages that would potentially be the commercial fronts, we've, uh, we've elevated the uh, Roof up and uh, in a low slope to create a double height space in the event that uh, someone may want to have a mezzanine uh, put in to one of their tenant fit outs. This would allow for a, a secondary story for either uh, uh, staff working or additional space for, for a particular use. Uh, the corner of each of the buildings has been articulated with uh, some canopies. We brought some glazing around to, uh, to open up and kind of create a bit more of a, um, an inviting uh, frontage to ten and uh, the corner of the buildings. Uh, the same kind of rhythm you can see happening on, on the smaller building here, uh, focusing in on the elevation on, on tenth, where it sort of being created uh, where we have flat roofs and, uh, and the sort of the loading warehouse inside. We, we created a, a roof uh, overhang, deep roof overhang that turns vertically and then frames what would be a, uh, a kind of commercial frontage directly out on to the tent. So making as many attempts as we can within the, the realm of the industrial building to, uh, to still um, say hello to the street and have a little bit of uh, navigation on the street. The same happens on the corner here. Um, the elevation the view here in the middle is coming uh, if you're moving south down 10th Street. This is building two, and then this would be the uh, back of, or the loading side of building one, with uh, the gable end of building one trying to uh, create that animation and uh, frontage on the street in, in similar fashion. The, uh, the building two faces uh, with its front doors out to 10th with the industrial parking maneuvering all in the background. Um, the interesting thing about these, uh, the rhythm of these, uh, 
that portal is in front of you is that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, trying to achieve uh, as much flexibility as possible. We, uh, we created a rhythm of, of uh, window apertures and uh, frontages that could be, uh, we could include additional ones or uh, take a certain phase out depending on how the, uh, how the, uh, the is, is ultimately utilized. So again, we, we try our best to kind of create a, uh, a character that speaks to both buildings so, uh, as a family buildings and then uh, allowing for some flexibility. Uh, the, the plan kind of illustrates how the maze will be uh, broken up and someone may purchase half the building or only one day and, uh, and then be able to hang their signage out on that, on that uh, articulated frontage where the front doors and canopies and uh, change material is. Uh, building two, same kind of thing, uh, smaller bays. Uh, um, the elevations here kind of illustrate that we've got a, a mix of materials to try to break up the, the kind of the simplicity of the industrial utilitarian part of the building. Uh, we've wrapped materials around the corner and then changed the material to break down the, the uh, sort of elongated uh, overhead doors needed for any industrial use. And again, uh, this elevation illustrates the uh, articulation of the facade using different materials, punching windows, creating um, canopies over front doors, and then accepting that with a warmer uh, wood look metal uh, panel uh, so that it's pretty obvious that there are uh, there are front doors and high end signage would be having on these uh, these canopies that project over the uh, the staff entryways or the entryway to the commercial side. Building two is a uh, oh, sorry Building 2 is a similar version of that where we've got uh, the corners are completed. We've created some uh, turning the corner for the, uh, for the corner bays. And then a smaller scale version of the uh, utilitarian end of the building for, um, for truck looping. So uh, the section here illustrates this is a maximum height permitted within the, within the zone. Uh, we've created a building that's sufficient to, uh, to achieve the, the uh, the area for the loading warehousing, uh, the double height space can potentially happen in front where we've articulated the, uh, the glazing and, uh, and, and uh, frontages. So our material palette is a combination of uh, metal panels obviously we want to be, uh, we want our building to be as durable as possible given you know, its, its kind of function and use, uh, but we've, we've tried to uh, take those industrial materials, blend them together with uh, uh, light dark tones and then have the accent uh, wood look metal panel siding as something a bit more uh, human scale uh, warm and to kind of invite you to the to the front door so um, that's the that's the sort of broad brush overview of our uh, of our form and character for the buildings again they need to kind of sit in, in, in juxtaposition with each other a lot of the site design was heavily predicated on the right of way that cuts through the, the property and the uh, significant grass knoll or, or built up knoll where the, uh, the hydro pole lines are anchored and dug into. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have, with any industrial space, tried to uh, achieve as much turning and flexibility uh, in the yard space as we, uh, as we can uh, while we anticipate the, uh, uh, the inevitable you know, filling up of this with multiple tents. Um, uh, we are uh, we are providing additional parking. Um, for part of our rationale for that is with the opportunity for tenants to come in and place a mezzanine in the second floor would essentially uh, change the gross floor area of the of the buildings overall. And, uh, and there's a, there's an obvious buffer of additional parking potentially being required on the site. So uh, we've, kind of, we've tried to sort of future-proof that a little bit with uh, providing, providing the additional parking. And in any uh, industrial project, it's the, you know, so parking does come as a significant part of the, um, the, the use. Um, so uh, so we have all the part of the, uh, the site, what we've done intentionally uh, anticipating uh, additional square footage coming in, uh, part of being associated with that. And um, I will sort of hand it over now to Kara to do a quick uh, 
review of the, uh, the landscape plan for uh, in or our buildings. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so to start with, this is the north uh, portion of the site. Uh, it's big, so it's two sheets. So I'll start here first. So um, overall, the plan focuses on the minimum lines, landscape treatments uh, required for the perimeter of the site. Uh, we did incorporate 50% evergreen species in accordance with the Southern Island Design Guidelines. About 50% of the plants are indigenous species throughout the site. Um, we did uh, we selected the plant species along the 10th Street frontage to match the plant palette to the industrial development by the same owner across the street. Uh, there's no tree planting under the hybrid board or the bisex property, otherwise tree planting meets the minimum landscape requirements. In the northern portion of the site that you see here, we use shrub planting, again, using a pallet from across the street to screen the parking area in front of building two. Uh, there's a staff amenity space, including trees and shrub planting, a picnic table and benches uh, provided on the south side of building two. Um, the east side of the site is a planted stormwater swell. There's a painted cross, crossing and sidewalk connection from building two to building one, so you can actually go to the next slide. Um, the overhead lighting for the site will be planned by an electrical engineer in the post, later in the process for safety and security. Um, this lighting will be added with uh, to light the pedestrian connection to the south. On this slide here, which is the south section of the property, um, again, the landscape buffers to the east and to the south are also planted stormwater swells that drain into the rock line planted stormwater pond at the southeast corner of the site. Uh, the southern stormwater, stormwater swell is also a sanitary sewer right away, so we didn't propose planting over that right of way. Um, if the city engineering department is, has no concerns with planting over that right of way, we, we would plant, we'd be open to plant trees over there. Um, there's a staff picnic table located adjacent to the stormwater pond and a bench located at the entrance of building one. Um, so overall, given that this is an industrial site, the client would like to keep the landscape to the minimum requirements. Um, I will just talk briefly about, there was a mis misunderstanding on my end regarding the right way along the 10th Street frontage um, during the design development. We thought that this was actually being part of the city's road right way, but it's actually um, a proposed ditch that would be on property. So since, since it's on property, the variance for the encroachment into the 1.8 meter landscape buffer, um, the variance that was, that, that was in staff report, um, it won't be for the width of the buffer, but it will be for the planting, uh, because that ditch, from what I understand, will be a traditional um, roadside ditch design, so it will be a ditch design, but I think Drew can probably talk more about the city engineering staff. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Um, yeah, I guess I can start with the 10th Street. The intention there is there's an existing roadside ditch, and that ditch would remain, um, but just be moved um, onto property in an SRW. So that ditch would still um, be part of the subject property, not the road dedication. So that's the clarification Kara was making. Um, this site is tributary to Chase River, so we will be providing uh, both water quality treatment. Um, retention, meeting the city's retention requirements, and also detention. It, the site kind of generally slopes from the north, uh, west, down to the southeast. Uh, and what we've done is graded the site such that the majority of the pavement areas will drain as much as possible into that bioswale that Kara talked about that will run all the way along the east property line and then on the south of that parking area, same thing. Um, we'll have a swale that runs the entire length of that parking area to collect any runoff from those hard surfaces and direct them to the large uh, stormwater pond that we have uh, in that southeast corner. The swales themselves will provide that, um, both some of that retention requirement and that water quality um, treatment that's needed. And then the detention volume comes from that pond that's located in the southeast corner and then will discharge and drain <coughs> to the east into the Chase River. Um, yeah, that's really it for me. Thanks, Drew. Um, so I think that covers uh, our, uh, our form of and landscape and the uh, civil design. So uh, if there are any questions, will you then? Up here. Great. Well, thanks, Glenn, uh, Glenn Carrot, and Drew. And uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, does any staff have uh, 
questions for the or any committee members have questions for the staff. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, Glenn, you can stop sharing your screen, then I can see. Oh, space. yes, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin. Are you going to say something, Kevin? I think you're back. Sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, Christine, uh, there's two narrow strips of land to the south that separate this property from, I guess it's the uh, Wexford Creek Seniors facility. And one's kind of a long rectangular shape, and one's just kind of like a long triangular shape. And on the zoning map, it doesn't describe what they are. And, uh, and what their use is. Uh, can you maybe shed some light on that for me, please? Sure, I'm just going to pull that up on a map and see. Yeah, there's two strips. One's a, the first one is a long rectangular one, and then there's a kind of a, a, a triangular shaped one that separates this property with Wexford Creek uh, Seniors facility. This section here? That one and the one above it. That right. There's two there. And I want to know what their purposes are and uh, whether they're part of another piece of land that they're going to use uh, to keep for increased density or whether or not, you know, obviously, they're right for invasives and stuff. So. Yeah, so certainly I can uh, point out that there's the in the in and corridor that sort of separates the two properties, and then across the road is is where that um, Chase River uh, Wexford, yeah. sorry, yeah, Wexford plan sort of starts to take an effect. And I see Lania's on uh, her videos on. To see whether she may know. Yeah, I'm just trying to look. Uh, Kevin, I'm trying to see if that was even part of the. It's not part of the railway then, right? That's on CS3. Well, it, it, it is there, but I'm not sure it can be on it. Because yeah. it's going to lead up to some further questions with Kara. Yeah, I, I, I think on my map, it looks like it's hooked with the railway land. But um, maybe if we look at look into that while you're asking some other questions that we can confirm during okay. the dialogue. Yeah, but that's all I have to see. Um, Thanks, Lenny. Sure. Yeah, we'll get back to you in a bit. Thank you. Okay. Anybody, any other um, committee members have questions for staff? Otherwise, I'd let Kevin go ahead with his comments, maybe. Okay, it looks good. Go ahead, Kevin. You can... Okay, thanks, Madam Chair. And uh, uh, I think, all things considered, this is really a, a real sensitive project. Uh, uh, Glenn, obviously, you have your hands full trying to uh, deal with a, a light industrial site right up against residential properties. And uh, when there isn't real, a real, I'm assuming, like there isn't a tenant or any tenants provided for this so far, is that correct? Turn your mic on, Glenn. That's a problem that never goes <laughs> away. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there is no confirmed uh, tenants. Uh, the, uh, the object of my story is to uh, is sort of try and find as much flexibility as possible so that that uh, attracts uh, any opportunities for, uh, for potential tenants. Um, so that's, that's kind of the premise that we went on. Yeah, and that's what's really frustrating for us because obviously you have all these all these parking stalls and if there's going to be you know, 20 tenants in these buildings, that's great. There's only going to be like three or four of them. You know, uh, why do you need them? And uh, I, I'm really most concerned about uh, the only real concerns, and I think the way you dealt with farm character in the um, with especially with used materials, I think you've done very well. Uh, I, I would just say that uh, in relating a little bit to the staff comments, um, how both buildings relate to, uh, uh, to 10th Street, um, that would, those would be the only things I would be uh, careful of. And again, you don't know what, who's going to be in these buildings, so you have to be careful with how you, you work with materials. But I think um, how the buildings relate to that street are probably the most important. That and how the building relates to the residential property in the south uh, are probably my biggest concerns. 
Um, I, I would probably have the client speak to that. It, it is industrial sites. I don't think there's any um, expectation from them to put in the work fence, although I don't understand what you're saying. Do you have any comment on that product? Oh, we have no plans on putting our things on there. Uh, just to let you know, in terms of visibility to the residential area, there's, there is so much foliage and trees in that zone, you can't see the residents. Yeah, and there's a basis too, right? right? Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's in the red. Yeah. And then bases and chain link fence don't work very well together. But um, well, I can only, I can only work on the invasive on my property. But I don't yeah. see uh, as a bylaw against invasives, and if they were willing to approach the uh, railway company, then they could uh, maybe force them to uh, to start working on removal of those invasives. I know that we are approached with other properties to do that on an annual basis. That's something that the city could take on with uh, with the uh, people who manage the railway corridor. I think they have yeah. other rules of action than putting in a wooden fence. Um, yeah. Cause Basically, for your site, it's up to you to make sure that you know the, the landscape management plan is, is, is really upheld, especially along that southern property line. And uh, you know, it's, you know, basically, you, you have a lot of ground, ground cover and shrubs, and that's pretty well lit. And uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm not sure what else I could add to that. All I'm saying is, is that can be, you know, especially on the south side of the property, we get a lot of sun. It could, could be disastrous.
uh, that might be encroaching on the landscape, uh, landscape buffer, is that correct, or is there more than one? Um, are you doing it in front of building two? Yes. Yeah, and I did, I did, sorry, I talked really fast, so my presentation, I went, you probably didn't hear it. Um, <laughs> I did address that um, in the discussion regarding the right of way, so there, um, the variance for that corner where, where it's inches tight won't be for the distance, because now we're going to have be including a ditch, which is, um, I think, two and a half or three meters wide, so the variance will be for the planting, not for the width. Um, but yes, it will be because there's going to be ditch there. We just we sort of end up planting there because it's just going to drop off the ditch. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one last question for Drew: um, Is all the um, stormwater are going to be oil, oil separators, or is everything going to be dealt with through the uh, through the uh, rain garden? Everything will be dealt with the combination of the bio spills and then that rain garden. So yeah. Okay. Thank Good. Thank you very much. Nice presentation, you guys. Thanks. So, uh, Kevin, we've had a clarification on those two properties that you uh, mentioned. They belong to the Island Corridor Foundation. So, again, these are these are people that are also responsible, I presume, to clear off the invasive species yeah. on that property. And, <laughs> so, and, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll wait and see if that happens. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Sorry, there's, there's that. Yeah, let's throw that in there because I would hate to see a nice landscape buffer put along the south property line and then find out that it's going to just keep overrun. So, I, I, yeah, I, I, they got very important too. And just, you know, we did that it's going to stop this species, but, um, you know, they're, the plant is super, super dense to meet the requirements for the landscape. So, if, you know, if Mark Norman, you know, stay on it for the first couple of years, get that hedge really established, it's going to provide some shade on our side of the property. Um, you know, hopefully, <laughs> and bases are possible. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Okay. I just want to mention one more thing regarding the landscaping, Kevin, uh, might be of interest to you. These are going to be long-term leasehold properties to whatever companies are interested in leasing those spaces. So, of course, when we uh, offer those for lease, part of that is up the upkeep of, for us to upkeep the landscaping in that area. And it'll be part of lease agreements as well because it doesn't serve anyone if the landscaping looks terrible if you have your brand presenting out of uh, uh, out of out of space as a brand new brand new build so you get a certain type of customer. Um, so we just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jason, do you want to add your thoughts on this? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, nice job. Uh, I don't have many comments on the forming character. I know these long span structures kind of are what they are, and, uh, but I think you've done a, a nice job in adding some texture and materiality to help break up the scale of what can be very, very long elevations on, on the facade. So, um, no real comments there. My, my main comments actually have to do with the landscaping, and I agree. I think uh, I'd like to see more landscaping along the 10th Street property. I know it being a connector from the neighborhoods to the grocery store in the area, and, 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 um, having a, a presentable front uh, to, would be, I think, uh, a real benefit to the property. As well as, um, I, I understand that there's uh, over parking for additional mezzanine spaces, but it's a, a significant amount of over parking, and I think you could lose a few stalls. Um, not have the, the encroachment into the buffer uh, and even have some opportunities for additional planting along the, the south property line um, adjacent to uh, the retirement center which is across the tracks there and I understand that's a very dense on, the, on that side but it would be nice to, to um, have a, some reciprocity and make sure that there's a, a proper edge along that side. Um, otherwise those are all of my com comments. Uh, thank you Madam Chair. Great, thanks Jason. Um, Tyler. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks so much for the presentation. Like 20 years ago, I worked from town to town on an industrial site there. Not much has changed since, so I think this is a, a very welcome addition. So it's great to see. It's great to see this kind of change happen. Um, uh, I really like Jason's comments there around parking. I think if they, um, and I understand it might be difficult, but uh, too much parking sometimes I think, can really take away from the site. And if it's not required, or it won't be required. Um, there's an opportunity there as outlined. Um, I have nothing else to add other than respect to the ICF or the Island Border Foundation parcels. Um, I just would say I would not expect at any time for the maintenance budget to increase. I say that as a director uh, for the ICF. And it has no budget, so um, it's a very challenging problem along the whole corridor. So 
Uh, any any, any uh, solution would need to be found on site. Thanks. Great, thanks, Tyler. Uh, Kate? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I don't have any comments about building or anything. I, I generally find these sites tricky to comment on because I actually think there are wonderful opportunities for you to do, take more of a restorative approach to the landscape and, and bring back a little more biodiversity and kind of wilder type of nature. But uh, I understand you're doing the minimum you have to do. Um, and I would encourage you to rethink that. And I see opportunities for you to have a few more trees, a few more plants, a few areas. And I think the long term, it will not cost you more, um, and you will benefit your site will benefit, and the neighboring properties will benefit from that. So, Tara, I wasn't quite sure. I was a little confused by the plan initially, but the large um, rain garden, I guess, at the, the south east corner, is that right? <laughs>
because ultimately you're maybe in a town that uh, takes on several of these bays, and um, you're probably want to place their signage and put a brand logo uh, where they want customers to come and go, or is that to be the examples? Uh, and, and it's conceivable that every single bay unlikely could have its own tenant and or its own signage. So um, I, I guess uh, it's unfortunate that the signage has its own DP that we don't see because DP is an integral part of this type of development. Uh, you know, some, some of them uh, just look like a you know, complete dog's breakfast because there's no control. It sounds like you're hoping for some control, but it would be helpful to us as an advisory design panel, so we can use an architect, um, you know, to have that illustrated so that, you know, it is such an integral part of the interior design. And I say that because one of my first impressions when I looked at your elevations, um, particularly the entrance exposure ones that most people are going to see, um, I thought it looked, um, I, I thought it looked quite soft and quiet, and I wonder if a polite word to, 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 to describe it, but I thought it could use a little more punch. Uh, and I thought, for example, those entrance canopies, the way you've got them ending and coming down to the ground, if they could be you know, an accent color or something, just to lighten the whole facade up uh, a little bit, which I think it could use. Uh, that being said, if that were to happen, and then on top of that, you put a whole ton of signage, um, again, uh, it, it's something that I, I think is uh, uh, sort of a, all, all of a piece. And uh, I guess uh, I'm sorry, if you could have a comment on uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, venue. So that's what I'm going to yeah. so I guess it be up to you to do what you want with it and to use your project, but uh, just be very careful with the level of control. And uh, yeah. that's really all I wanted to say. Thanks. Yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely a, uh, a common well known uh, idea when it comes to the accent color. We, uh, we were pretty strategic in selecting our materials in a manner that, uh, regardless of the, uh, the tenants, if we had, for example, one tenant take a significant portion of the building, uh, and we had a bright red accent stripe or a bright yellow or a bright, you know, the danger of that color conflicting with a, uh, a particular brand was was something that we wanted to, to take into consideration. So we we used the materials and the forms the best way we could to craft the building with uh, uh, essentially what would be a backdrop. And then if there are if there are a couple of major tenants that come with their own significant brand, that means that uh, we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be um, discouraging that those tenants and tenants to show up based on kind of that kind of scene of other. So yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one to uh, craft while creating, you know, a, a certain sense of value. Great. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think what you've done done is a really good job of trying to work with a very difficult property. Um, with that power line and the restrictions that that, that imposes, and then have also a f very flexible space for the type of uh, businesses that are hopefully going to go in there. So. I think this is a, it's a good project and generally um, well done. And uh, I think we have a lot of comments to add. Other than that, uh, again, I, I'd emphasize the landscaping part. I know it's an industrial project, but again, you're facing 10th Street with a lot of uh, uh, traffic going by there. I think it would enhance the property to have a really good look on, the, on, that, on that street, public facing part of it. Um, also, within the landscaping, I guess it would. Uh, amenity space outside would come into into play. I like on the one building you have the amenity space sort of tucked in beside the building, which is great. Like in winter time, people want to go out and have a have a little chat or have their lunch. And, um, you've got this sort of protected space in there with a few plantings around it. Um, but the second, the other building, the south building, doesn't seem to have. You, know, you get a picnic table. So again, I think Kate's point of adding trees or even maybe a, a trout, some sort of shelter for the people in that building to sit in. I think all these kinds of things then enhance enhance the property for your tenants as well, make it more attractive for your tenants. So um, that would be my only suggestion for, for this particular property uh, project. So anyway, uh, thanks on for that. And maybe our committee now, we can just uh, summarize our recommendations. Um, Tony, I just wanted to ask you, did you want to make a, a 
uh, recommendation around this signage or uh, your comments on the color and that sort of thing? So I, I mean, I don't know how to sign It was just a comment then, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically, I, mean, I, I, I think the applicant and the owner are well aware of, you know, the cabinet with some level of control and some level of flexibility, fair enough. Right, yeah. Uh, just, uh, yeah, I think, your, I think your point was well taken. And on one hand, they're trying to be flexible, but then we're not getting the whole picture either as a committee and looking at the project. So that poses its own challenges as well. So what I'm seeing is just uh, basically some um, recommendations around the landscaping. So consider enhancing the landscaping along 10th Street and the south property line. Uh, consider more landscaping where possible within the property. And I might, uh, I, yeah, I think that's probably, anybody else uh, want to add anything to that? Is that sort of sufficient? Let's see. Kevin? Well, there was a talk about uh, considering reducing parking spaces back then. I wasn't sure if that's something that you know, we can really comment on. And the only other, my only other comment was uh, looking at uh, recommending that they look at the, uh, the elevation set face, the 10th Street uh, parts of the buildings to, to add a little bit more articulation to those, which really relate to the street better. And uh, nobody else jumped in on that, so you guys can decide. <laughs> okay. Everybody's just good with the landscaping, or everybody want to add anything on the buildings? Didn't hear too much. Okay. Well, let's, uh, somebody want to bring forward a motion then? So for, with two recommendations, consider enhancing the landscape along 10th Street and the south property line. Consider more landscaping where possible within the property. And I think that kind of covers the parking. We talked about how they could do that. Um, we won't specify how exactly. So um, could I have a motion to accept the application as presented with those two recommendations? Uh, Tony and the seconder. Oh, Kate. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Great. Okay. Um, I think that does it. So thank you very much to the applicants. Uh, appreciate your presentation. Good work. And uh, if everybody can, oh, before we will adjourn, and uh, then we're if everybody can, in the committee can stay on for a few minutes. I think we have a few uh, notices to discuss. So uh, let's have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Kate, uh, seconded by Kevin. All in favor? <laughs> Good. Okay. So we're now adjourned.